Welcome back, Chris Hadfield. You are such a great astronaut and whatever. Too bad your body sucks now. Howdy, space enthusiasts. Trace here for D News. An astronaut's job is rough. Not only do they have intense physical and educational training prior to going into space, which ain't no picnic either, when they get back from longer missions, they have just wasted away. For example, astronauts like International Space Station Commander Chris Hadfield, who just returned, as well as his co-astronauts and cosmonauts will all need to seek intensive rehab now that they're back from space. And it's not just champagne and parties. I mean, there's not even alcohol in space, so I don't know if they could handle that. Once out of the pull of gravity, the human body is in a completely alien environment to how it evolved to operate. So for example, the heart, which is used to pump pumping blood against the flow of gravity works harder to send blood up than it does down. So while in space, astronauts' faces get all puffy and their legs get all thin. But that's just one minor example. While in space, the whole human body adjusts to what NASA calls space normal condition. Almost immediately, many astronauts experience space sickness while their senses adjust to the lack of gravity. But once the body settles into this new normal, it begins to adapt and change. Bones are constantly being rebuilt, but without gravity, there's no need to make them so thick. So bone density drops, especially in the legs. The heart doesn't work as hard to push blood around the body, so the heart muscles start to shrink. Blood plasma lessens and without pressure from gravity, astronauts are prone to fainting. Muscles in the legs don't have to lift their own weight even, so they atrophy or thin and weaken. And the longer the astronaut spends in space, the worse shape they would be when they get back to Earth. To combat these problems, astronauts are required to exercise two and a half hours a day using a special treadmill, resistance bands, like big rubber bands, and a cycle ergonometer, or stationary resistance bike. Even with rigorous exercise, astronauts still lose about half to 1% of their bone density per month spent in space. To further fight the loss, they take vitamins and medication prescribed normally for postmenopausal women. Upon landing, Hadfield would likely feel shaky, lightheaded, and would even have trouble walking without help. Driving a car or lifting anything heavy, that would be totally out. After two weeks of rehab, which is basically physical therapy, he might be able to drive a car again, maybe. Ideally, it would take six weeks to get back to his pre-flight strength, but until the doctors decide he's healthy enough for normal Earth activity, he's just gonna have to keep working at it. The problem isn't only restoring their physique, space is still filled with a lot of unknowns. Can the human body regenerate after months under bombardment of cosmic particles? Did exposure to the increased radiation of space mess with Hadfield's DNA? Mutations, cataracts, or worse, cancer. Not to mention the psychological effects of being in space and then having to return to the drudgery of Earth-bound human life. Time will only tell how generations of astronauts and cosmonauts deal with the pressures of space travel. But what would be the best and worst thing about living in space for five months? Tell us in the comments or tweet at us at DNews. Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep an eye on the skies. <laughs>